what's good my people today we've got a video called the most beautiful life goes on a story of bts 2021 update from the channel called the asian theory now you guys literally bombarded my comment section below telling me i should react to this so big shout out to every one of you i'll leave all your names right here if i can find you there were so more than this but anyways you guys said this is a must react and i'm probably gonna react to the introduction to the seven members individually after this or you guys can tell me what you should react to next i know there's a lot of content i'll probably get to all of it don't worry about it but you know i'm just trying to get the the flow of each one correct so i can get the best knowledge when i react to the next track and the next track and the next video anyways this is a 38 minute long video you guys said you don't mind long videos so big shout out to all of you guys can't wait to get into this make sure you get your popcorn and everything ready let's get into it real quick before we get into this video if you enjoyed this video don't forget if at the end of the video you enjoyed it uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see my future reactions it's all for free but let's get into the 38 long video i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited i don't know if i should put subtitles on no i don't let's get today in. everyone knows the name of bts they've been invited onto late night talk shows they've shattered records they've sold out stadiums they've made it onto the big screen these days You'd be hard pressed to find someone who didn't know who these guys were, Facts. or at least haven't heard one of their songs. Uh, when I started acting like, K-pop, I obviously knew who they were, but like I never really knew how big they were till this day, you know. And if they don't, either they've been living under a rock, or they're a <laughs> hundred years old. The success of the Bangtan Boys is worldwide. Bang Tan, but it wasn't always like this. The very existence of BTS can be owed to its founding father, an innovator by the name of Hitman Bang. His idea to create a rap group was somewhat inspired by YG. In the late 90s, he experimented with this idea with different trainees, eventually choosing seven members. And while three of them eventually left, the remaining four, Teddy, Danny, Jinhwan, and Baekhyun, debuted in 1998 as One Time. Their first album, titled One... 1998. I never knew the manager had a group before BTS, actually, so this is cool to know. One Time For Your Mind was one of the year's best-selling albums and won several awards, including the Global Disc and SBS Music Awards for Best New Artist and KMTV's Award for Best Hip Hop Artist. The group enjoyed moderate success and released four more albums before going on indefinite hiatus in 2006 due to their mandatory military service. Uh... The year was 2010. I heard about this uh, military service. Each one needs to have two years of service before they're 30 or something like that. And that's why BTS will have to disband for two years or something like that. I'm not too sure. You guys are, will help me out on the comments, though, but I heard something about that. And the five year old company, Big Hit Entertainment, had previously signed two artists, 8 8 and 2 AM. They had their share of successes, but they were very traditional K pop groups. Big Hit wanted a fresh new sound, and upon listening to One Time, CEO Hitman Fang si Hyo had decided that that was the sound that he was looking for. And on top of that, the youth needed someone to relate to, and more importantly, look up to. He had decided he would create a hip hop group. RM, let's get it, BTS, bro. Sound that he was looking for. And on top of that, the youth needed someone to relate to, and more importantly, look up to. B he decided to create a hip hop group. At 15 years old, Kim Nam Joon. Kim Nam Joon auditioned for a certain big deal records, which he completely botched, forgetting the lyrics to the song he was performing. Afterwards, fellow rapper Sleepy recommended that he try auditioning at another label, Big Hit, and even put in a good word for him to one of the producers there. At age 16, Nam Joon auditioned in front of Bang Si Hyuk himself and instantly impressed him. He was offered okay. to deal with Big Hit on the spot, which Nam Joon accepted and became a trainee, officially choosing a name for himself, Rap Monster, destined to become the leader of the newly created group. Now that a fearless leader was chosen, they needed more. You guys told me he's the leader. Although all seven together form BTS, obviously. But like, it's cool to know that RM was one of the first. At 16 years old already, I know the youngest one, Jungkook, I believe, he already uh, joined when he was 15, you know? So that's crazy. More members. Min, Min Yong Gi was a 17 year old living in Daegu, an avid basketball player and rapper. He had been interested in music, especially rap, from a, Yo, he's a, hooper as well. a very early age. 
and despite his parents' disapproval, started performing as a rapper while still in high school. He quickly gained attention as a rapper and producer in the underground hip-hop scene. One day he saw a flyer for a rap competition called Hit It and decided to participate. And although he only placed second, the company hosting the competition, you guessed it, Big Hit, decided to sign him on as a producer. Hitman wow. Bang spoke with him afterwards, convincing him to join a newly created hip hop group. He told him to just focus on rapping and assured him that he wouldn't need to dance. He was lying. And just like that, the new group had a second member, True. known as Suga. A combination of- Suga, he was the second one, okay. They told him he was not gonna dance. <laughs> and now he's a great dancer. The That's first cool. two syllables of shooting guard, his favorite position in basketball. But they- Oh, shooting guard, Suga. Oh my days, I just thought it meant sugar. Wouldn't stop there. Rappers were nice, but Big Hit actually needed a dancer. Jung Ho Sok always loved dancing. He was in the starting lineup of the dance crew Neuron in his hometown, Gwangju. He was good at it too, winning several local championships and even winning a championship at the national level in 2008. While he did perform at several competitions hosted by JYP and even won some of them, he ultimately went on to audition for a smaller, lesser known company. Big Hit Entertainment. His dance skills and strong understanding of rhythm made him an instant favorite, and he was signed on as J-Hope. Not only that, but they saw potential in him to become a rapper, which at this point he had little experience with. However, J-Hope made the decision to leave Big Hit until RM convinced both J-Hope and Big Hit that the group wouldn't be complete without him. That's cool. I actually, this video, yo, I, there's so many stuff I don't know. He was right. With the addition of J-Hope, the rap line was complete. Now they needed some singers. Now, just like how RM, an amazing rapper with a ton of experience, was chosen as the first official member of the rap line, it would only make sense that a legendary singer and dancer would be the perfect first member of the vocal line. Right? But Kim Sok Jin didn't have any sort of experience like that. Believe it or not, one day when he was walking on the streets of his hometown, Anyang, he was approached by a representative of SM Entertainment with an offer to work for the company. In typical Jin fashion, he never followed up with them because he believed it to be a scam. Apparently Jin was- Yeah, who wouldn't think it's a scam, right? He was a very good looking guy because years later, this time as a college student in Seoul, he was once again approached on the street, this time by an executive at Big Hit Entertainment. He didn't sing, he didn't dance. He was at school to become an actor, and he decided to audition to become an actor. Big Hit, however, had different plans for him, and convinced him to become a vocalist for their new group. Yo, I should have walked on the streets. Way back then, bro, maybe I would have been sad. That's crazy. Yo, this guy's this guy's story is the most interesting. He literally just walked in the street and bam. How much years later? Seven, seven, eight years later? BTS. Crazy. This time as a college student in Seoul, he was once again approached on the street. This time by an executive at Big Hit Entertainment. He didn't sing, he didn't dance. He was at school to become an actor, and he decided to audition to become an actor. Big Hit, however, had different plans for him, and convinced him to become a vocalist for their new group. To do so, he literally learned to dance and sing starting from zero. Wow. But thankfully, not without help from other vocalists. I like this. I like this video Jung so Jung Cook initially had dreams of becoming a badminton player when he was young, but after seeing G-Dragon perform Heartbreaker on television, it influenced him to want to become a singer instead. Because of this, at only age 14, he decided to audition for the South Korean talent show, Superstar K. He didn't pass auditions, but this was just enough to catch the eye of not one company, not two companies, but seven different companies. This included JYP, FNC, Woolum, Starship Entertainment, TS, Cube, and of course, Big Hit Entertainment. So why did Jungkook, given the choice of all these bigger companies, decide to go with the relatively smaller company, Big Hit? The answer was simple, because he thought, and I quote, RM was cool, so I wanted to sign with Yeah, I'm literally the same when I think about RM. I just think he's cool, that's why he's my bias. I literally think he's the coolest guy in town, bro. That brings the number of members to five. The next member of BTS was just as surprised to find Big Hit as Big Hit was to find him, and it almost didn't happen. 
I'm Nick Nimmin, and I'm a StreamYard user. For the last six years, I've been live Kim Taehyung was always passionate about music, and it was always his dream to pursue it as a career. However, okay. it was hard, as his family was poor, his parents being humble farmers. His father told him that if he was passionate about music, he should learn an instrument, and he did, spending three years practicing with a saxophone. One day, one of his friends decided to audition for Big Hit Entertainment when they were holding auditions in his hometown of Daegu. Taehyung, being a good friend, came with him to keep him company, but when one of the team members in charge of the audition saw Taehyung, he encouraged him to audition as well. With nothing to lose, he did. That day, he was the only one in Daegu to move on to the next round of auditions, and eventually became a trainee for Big Hit Entertainment. They decided to keep him as a surprise member, and didn't want to reveal him as one of the members until his debut. In the same vein, Big Hit had- Wait, did, did I get this right? There was a guy who did the saxophone, and his friend came along and both got signed. Wait, 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 I think I heard that wrong. Farmers. His father told him that if he was passionate about music, he should learn an instrument. And he did, spending three years practicing with a saxophone. One day, one of his friends decided to audition for Big Hit Entertainment when they were holding auditions in his hometown of Daegu. Young, being a good friend, came with him to keep him company. But when one of the team members in charge of the audition saw Young, he encouraged him to audition as well. With nothing to lose, he did. That day, he was the only one in Daegu to move on to the next round of Oh, he get, he went along with his friend, but then he got chosen. That's crazy. Auditions and eventually became a trainee for Big Hit Entertainment. They decided to keep him as a surprise member and didn't want to reveal him as one of the members until his debut. In the same vein, Big Hit had him choose something mysterious for his stage name. He decided to go with V for victory. Here seems Yo, like a nice v. round number to stop, right? Six members for a new hip-hop group, three rappers, and three vocalists. It seems like a complete group, but still there was something missing. Some... one was missing. Someone that could take this already great group of artists and push it even further to achieve perfection. A powerhouse. Someone so naturally talented that they could stand out in a room full of already talented artists. This project that- Yo, these guys can dress. Yo, BTS got fashion, bro. Yo, these guys are literally so well put together. Missing. Some one was missing. Someone that could take this already great group of artists and push it even further to achieve perfection. A powerhouse. Someone so naturally talented that they could stand out in a room full of already talented artists. Right now this it is. project that Big Hit had embarked upon needed a capstone. Park Jimin was a naturally talented dancer. When yeah. he was in middle school, he attended a dance academy and continued to pursue dance at Busan High School of Arts, where he studied contemporary dance and was the top student in the whole modern dance department. Impressed by his raw talent, a teacher encouraged him to audition for Big Hit Entertainment, who were holding auditions in Busan. He was only 16 when he passed the audition and moved to Seoul to become a trainee. He was the final member of the group, and he also had the shortest training period. Interesting to note is that the group feels very much ragtag because, in a sense, with the exception of Jimin and J-Hope, it was. RM auditioned true. for- That's true, that's true. Like, they're actually so roughly put together. Like, they actually are a rough diamond and now they're a shining diamond. I feel what this is going to. Big hit because he didn't pass his auditions with the first company he chose. And despite their amazing talent, Suga and Jungkook didn't win the competitions they were in, but they signed on to Big Hit after the fact because of their high quality performances. V never even planned on auditioning and <laughs> yeah. just decided to do it on a whim. And they literally just found Jin on the streets, but perhaps <laughs> it was fate because this was the group that they chose. And just like Please. that, in 2012, the newly created Bang Tan Son Yandan, or simply BTS, was seven. Crazy how they were put together. I didn't even know it was like that. They had the group, but they still needed the music. In early 2013, they set out to create some social media presence for themselves before officially debuting, posting song covers on both SoundCloud and YouTube, which you can still go watch today. In May, Big Hit launched a countdown clock on their website in preparation for BTS's debut album, complete with a trailer and a ton of promotional material, including photos for the first time of all the members in the official lineup. Yeah. The big day came. June 12, 2013, BTS held a press conference and a debut showcase where they performed their two singles, No More Dream and We Are Bulletproof Part 2. The same day, the Too Cool For School album, as well as the music video for No More Dream, were released. 
very next day, BTS performed the song again on their official debut stage on Mnet's M Countdown. This was the Yo. world's first taste of BTS. Commercially, to be honest, I haven't even heard any BTS songs yet, except the Coldplay feature. That was the only track I read to BTS. I'm just like busy, you know, as most of you know, watching this video right now. I'm like going through all the introduction phase of, you know, an army should do to get the knowledge up. But bro, I didn't know it was like such a rich storyline. This is crazy. The album didn't do extraordinarily well. The lead single, No More Dream, peaked at 124 in Korea, <clears> and the album sold only 24,000 copies during its first year. Bulletproof Part 2 didn't even chart. The first year wasn't all that great for BTS, but despite everything, people saw them. People saw the sparkle in their eyes and their limitless potential. And they were hot, of course. On July 9th, <laughs> ARMY was established as BTS's official fandom. They made their comeback only two months later in September, when they released their single, No, along with their EP, part two of what would be their school trilogy, Oh, Are You Late 2. In the music video for the single, they made a commentary on the harsh Korean education system, along with their previous themes of hopes and dreams. No peaked at 92 in Korea, but also quickly fell off the charts. The album debuted at number 4 on the Gaon Weekly chart, and was the 55th best-selling album in South Korea that year. This was enough to secure them the coveted New Artist of the Year Award at the Melon Music Awards, the Golden Disc Awards, and the Soul Music Awards. Part 3 of the School Trilogy was released in February of 2014, the EP School Love Affair. This time, the lead single was Boy in Love. Hey. And the other single being just one. Dude, that little snippet already gave me some goosebumps. I feel the power in his voice, eh? And the Soul Music Awards. Yo. Part three of the School Trilogy was released in February of 2014. The These EP guys are. School Love Affair. This time, the lead single was Boy in Love. <laughs> and the other single being Just One Day. The album, as well as both singles, enjoyed moderate success, with the album topping the Gaon album chart, as well as making its first international appearance at number three on the Billboard World Albums chart. The album also no. marked their first distinctive change in theme, focusing more on school life and young love, as evidenced by their Boy In Love music video. They also held their first fan meetings with a crowd of 3,000 in Seoul. BTS was doing well, that is, yeah. until July. This is yeah, unfortunately hate. a dark chapter in the lives of BTS and ARMY. That's right, American Hustle Life. I'm joking, of course, but American Hustle Life was a reality show put together by Mnet that brought BTS to Los Angeles where they had the unique opportunity to learn the true ways of hip hop from the masters. And it was a pretty darn cringy opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless. Uh, whatever you do, just don't watch the Warren G version of Boy In Love, you've been warned. However, cringe and all, the trip proved fruitful for BTS, making connections, performing their first US concert for free in front of 200 fans, as well as their first appearance at KCON. The next month, in August, BTS released their first full-length studio album, Dark and Wild. The album featured two singles, Danger, Wanna Live in Los Angeles? Yo, these ads, bro. It is what it is. Well, and War of Hormones. <laughs> the album featured a marked shift in sound with a touch of R&B and electronica. It was met yeah. with moderate success. It peaked at number two in Korea, selling over 200,000 albums. The type of music they make are so like versatile from the beginning already. In October and again in May of the following year, BTS won on their first and second concert tours, known as the Red Bullet Tour, where they visited 13 different countries, including Japan, the Philippines, Australia, the US, Mexico, and many others. They also no. came out with their first Japanese album in December, Wake Up, featuring many Japanese versions of their songs as well. That's what I think a lot of uh, artists or, or groups do. They make like Japanese versions of their tracks. I know a lot of artists in the K-pop do this because I think Japanese is like a huge market of, uh, and it's so dope that they actually make Japanese versions. It just means like they actually care so much about their fan base, which is crazy. 13 different countries, including Japan, the Philippines, Australia, the US, Mexico, and many others. They also came out with their first Japanese album in December, Wake Up, featuring many Japanese versions of their songs as well as original tracks Wake Up and The Stars, followed by a Japan tour and a solo concert in Korea. Although Dark and Wild got decent attention, they needed something different. They needed something that would shake things up. They got to work. 
April 29, 2015 was their comeback. When this album was produced, each member had a hand in writing songs for the album. They again changed their sound, from aggressive hip-hop to youthful, colorful styles. And not only their sound, but their image as well. This can be evidenced by their newest EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life. And just by looking at the album cover, they ditched the dark colors and the bulletproof vest symbol that had become so synonymous with BTS, and replaced it with a simple white and pink background overlaid with the title. And then, they dropped the single that would change everything. I Need You. It was sentimental. It's so cool how they're testing and experimenting with different looks, different sounds and everything. It just shows you these guys really want to be where they're at now, bro. It was hopeful. It was new. Just by looking at the music video, we can see that BTS has also ditched their punk bad boy image and replaced it with a more real, vulnerable, down-to-earth and youthful feel. This proved to be the change that BTS needed for mainstream success. Billboard called it one of the greatest K-pop songs of the decade. It charted at number 5 in Korea, and even led them to their first music show win on SBS MTV's The Show. And that wasn't all, they released their second single, Dope, on June 24th, which started off with a poignant line from RM. Mm, also, uh, Welcome. Is this <laughs> loved, your first time with BTS? RM, bro. And you know what? For a lot of people, it was. In a way, their first studio album and tour can be seen as their stepping stone between old school BTS and new school. In November, they came back with their follow-up EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 2, the second EP in what would be dubbed the Youth Trilogy, which featured the single, Run. The album focused even more on the frivolity, friendship, and carefree attitude that comes with enjoying one's youth, but just like in I Need You, contrasted that with suffering, depression, loneliness, society, and the stark and sometimes dark reality of life. Compare this with the far cry of the No More Dreams music video. It felt real. It was darker, grittier, more humble, more meaningful, and most importantly, RM lost his mohawk. Run also connected narratively with the- <laughs> RM lost his mohawk. Yo, I like how RM looks now, like the modern RM. Yo, that, uh, dude, RM just to be the GOAT for me, bro. I don't know why I feel like that towards him, bro. I don't know. ...free attitude that comes with enjoying one's youth, but just like in I Need You, contrasted that with suffering, depression, loneliness, society, and the stark and sometimes dark reality of life. Compare this with the far cry of the No More Dreams music video. It felt real. It was darker, grittier, more humble, more meaningful, and most importantly, RM lost his mohawk. <laughs> Run also connected narratively with their previous single, I Need You, and another video released in September titled On Stage Prologue established what would come to be known as the BTS Universe, or the BU, which would eventually combine music videos, short films, books, short stories, webtoons, and even a mobile game to create a cohesive story. And I won't go down this what? rabbit hole because there is a lot to digest, but it's definitely something to look into if you're a hardcore army. The same month, they kicked off their third tour, the most beautiful moment in life on stage tour, where they performed songs from their two recent EPs. Wait, 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 was this Korea's Hardcore Army? The same month, they kicked off their third tour, the most beautiful moment in life. So their third tour was in Korea, Philippines, Taiwan, Malaysia, Thailand, and Japan. Life on stage tour, where they performed songs from their two recent EPs, Part One and Part Two, and Part Two was a hit their biggest so far. It topped the Weekly Gaon album and Billboard World Albums charts, and on Billboard, it stayed there for multiple weeks, the first K-pop act to do so. It also appeared on the Billboard 200 albums chart, not world albums, which was reserved for foreign non-English songs, but simply the top 200 albums, peaking at 171 which is kind of amazing considering that this was back in 2015. They also received Best World Performer at the 17th Mnet Asian Music Awards. This brings us to part three of the Youth Trilogy, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever, released on May 2nd, 2016, which featured probably my favorite BTS album cover. Young Forever was actually a compilation album of parts one and two, so it was mostly the same songs, but it's notable <laughs> that it had some new singles, Epilogue, Young Forever, Fire, and Save Me. The latter two performed exceptionally well. Yo, seeing parts of every single music video, bro, I can't wait to look at their, their music videos. Like, I feel like it's gonna be a blast, and I'm only... Like, starting to react to BTS, this is crazy. With both songs topping the Billboard World Digital Songs chart. This was also the second BTS album to chart on the Billboard 200 at 107, and it topped both the Gowan Weekly and Monthly chart, which earned BTS their first Daesung. <laughs> album of the Year at the 8th Melon Music Awards. 
They went on to do the second half of their tour, the most beautiful moment in life on stage epilogue, selling out many of their concerts and even selling out KCON in the US where they headlined the event. In September, they dropped their second Japanese album, Youth, featuring Japanese versions of tracks from their previous three EPs. Which went gold and peaked at number one on Japanese. So the Japanese versions, right? They all come from Korea so far. I know every single uh, uh, artist in BTS. So do do they learn Japanese to be able to make these tracks, or do they just like learn the the, the lyrics? Let me know because I feel like everyone knows uh, Japanese, Korean, and almost all of them know English by now. Charts. And only a month later, in October of 2016, it happened. BTS dropped their second studio album, Wings. It sold over 500,000 copies in its first week. In I remember the whole story about the haters as well. I just reacted to the hardships video. I remember this Wings project. In comparison, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 1, released just the previous year, which topped the gallon chart, sold about 500,000 in its entire lifetime. Wings was big, but the true showstopper was its lead single, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. <laughs> which got them their first all-kill, topping eight music charts in South Korea. Its music video gained 6 million views in the first 24 hours, which broke what? the YouTube record for the highest number of views of a K-pop group music video within 24 hours. Yo. The album hit number 26 on the Billboard 200, the highest ever charting K-pop album on Billboard. They ended up selling 1.5 million copies in South Korea in 2016 alone, and it netted them the Artist of the Year Award at the Mnet Asian Music Awards that same year, the first non-Big 3 artist ever to receive that award. <laughs> After Blood, Sweat, and Tears, they were on a roll. BTS was unstoppable. Thanks. In February of 2017, they released the instant hit Spring Day, which, quoting a Korean reviewer, embodied nostalgia and sorrow and opened a new chapter in BTS's aesthetics and lyricism and attracted fans across generational boundaries. Which, by the way, is still on Korean charts. After nearly four years, and the same day I'm writing this, it ranked number 53 on Melon. What the it won hell? Song of the Year at the 9th Melon Music Awards. After the release of Spring Day, they went on yet another tour, the 2017 BTS Live Trilogy, Episode 3, The Wings Tour. The tickets sold out within minutes, including in the United States, the first K-pop artist to do so, and went on to win Best Social Artist at the Billboard Music Awards. The first for a Korean artist, but they would go on to win this award four years in a row. The next year was a period <laughs> yeah. of massive growth for both the group's popularity as well as their style. They released the Love Yourself series starting with Love Yourself Her in September of 2017, Love Yourself Tear in May of 2018, and Love Yourself Answer in August of 2018. Three albums that gave us some of the most classic BTS songs that we know and love today, such as Mic Drop, so many suggestions on this track, bro. The mic drop. I think I'm gonna react to it with my homie. Don't worry. Fake love. Euphoria. Idol. And of course. That sounds like I'm a piano. That sounds like I'm a piano. That's like a, a genre of music in my country, very famous. And of Yo, that's that's I'm a piano, bro. What's track? What's this track's name? And of course, yeah, that's a fine track. All three albums were commercial successes, Her being their first album to top 2 million album sales, but Tear and Answer also did equally well. These three albums, as well as their Japanese album, Face Yourself, proved that they weren't done yet, not even close. During this time, they shattered countless records, their singles went platinum, they topped charts, they won awards, and not only did they break YouTube records, but they broke records that they themselves set again and again and again. They broke their own records to be- Ah, I see, I see. This is the period where BTS really started enjoying global recognition, working with huge Western artists such as Nicki Minaj, Designer, and Steve Aoki. It wasn't their first time having international features on their songs, Designer. but it was definitely the biggest. And even though they were already, without a doubt, the biggest act to ever come out of South Korea, they had their eyes set even higher. They went on tour once again for the Love Yourself World Tour. During this tour, they collaborated with Steve Aoki- 
I believe they're also touring uh, now in November or December this year in America as well. To make the song, Waste It On Me. Notable for being their first all English feature. And it also served as a jumping off point for BTS to gain a following of English speakers. Not that they really needed the help, as Thanks. they sold out concerts even in the US leg of the tour, including at City Field in Queens, New York, where tickets sold out in 20 minutes. And, as if that wasn't enough, they dropped the movie in November, Burn the Stage, which in the US alone grossed 3.54 million in the first weekend, breaking the record set by One Direction's movie, This Is Us. In September, RM had the unique opportunity to speak at the United Nations, where he's- A lot of you wanted me to react to the speech of RM, bro. I feel like this is a dope as uh, what do you call it, speech. You said it's a motivational. A lot of you said in the comment section, bro, this was a motivational speech spoke of anti-violence and self-love. Two years later, he would be offered to speak on a second occasion about persistence and hope in the face of challenges. And to top it all off, in October, the president of South Korea awarded every member of BTS the 5th class Hungwon Order of Cultural Merit for outstanding meritorious services in the field of culture and art, which is one of the highest South Korean orders of merit one can receive. And that's no exaggeration. 2019 estimates put BTS's contribution to the South Korean economy to the tune of $4.65 billion each year. Year, an equivalent to 0.3% of the country's GDP. They were the youngest to ever receive the honor. 2019, BTS invited to the Grammys, Time Magazine, Billboard. BTS entered a new era. Not an era of simply global recognition, but global dominance. I don't think it's possible to stop them, ever. Like, no one in the world can stop them at this point. There's no way, they have way too much mo uh, momentum at this point. <sighs> April 12, 2019, enter Map of the Soul Persona. First things first, you can't mention Map of the Soul Persona without mentioning Boy With Love. It was simple math. What do you get when you cross the singer of one of the best charting songs of all time that went platinum 59 times in 13 different countries with, without a question, the most globally dominant pop group of all time? Well, you get this. Nothing less than an instant hit. Number 8 on Billboard Hot 100. Platinum in the US. 21 music show wins. Boy with love, I gotta take this video out with my homie as well. Number 1 on iTunes in 67 different countries. The most liked and the most viewed YouTube video in the first 24 hours. The fastest video to reach 100 million views. A current view count of over 1 billion views. Seven boys, one girl, and seven different hair colors. They were the talk of the town, invited to talk show after talk show after talk show. The second single on the album was Make It Right. Oh, I can make it right. Written by Ed Sheeran himself, including a version featuring Loud. The album debuted at number one on Gaon and sold 3.2 million copies its first month, and that's only in Korea. It became the best selling album in South Korea ever. It swept every major Korean music show, winning Album of the Year in each one of them. They followed up this legendary EP with the Love Yourself, Speak Yourself World Tour, where they sold out both the Rose Bowl and the Wembley Stadium in only an hour, the only non English speaking act to do so. Like, it's already an accomplishment to sell it out but in that time period bro it just makes it so much fun this is insane dude. they even performed as a solo act in saudi arabia the first foreign act to do that the last stop of their tour was at south korea's largest venue the seoul olympic stadium they ended up grossing 200 million dollars during this time they also created a visual novel style game for mobile devices called bts world where the player can interact with the members this also came with an original soundtrack with tracks unique to the game featuring western artists Zara Larson, Charlie XCX, and Juice World for the tracks A Brand New Day, Dream Glow. Yo, wait, 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 Juice World, do they have a. Uh, I don't think they have a track with him, but it's something to do with this app. Wait. Also came with an original soundtrack with tracks unique to the game featuring Western artists Zara Larson, Charlie XCX, and uh... Juice World for the tracks A Brand New Day, Dream Glow, and All Night, respectively. In December of 2019, the group swept the grand prizes for both the Melon and Mnet Music Award shows, the first artist to do that. Map of the Soul Persona was legendary, truly a marvel in modern music. So how could BTS follow up the best-selling album in South Korean history, you may ask? Easy. Make an even better selling album. And that's what they did with Map of the Soul 7. The album was released on February 21st of 2020, featuring the singles Black Swan Another highly suggested track. And on. 
and sold over 4.1 million albums in just the first week, and the first Korean album to be certified as quadruple million on the Gaon music chart. It debuted at number one on music charts all over the world, including the US, Korea, the UK, Japan, and much of Europe. It's not an exaggeration to say that this album left a permanent mark on the world, launching BTS into legendary status and becoming the best-selling artist in South Korean history. BTS had scheduled a Map of the Soul tour for April of that year, which would have undoubtedly outsold their record-breaking tour only a year prior. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic caused the entire tour to be postponed, including the show at the Rose Bowl, which I was supposed to attend. But that uh... didn't stop BTS, who performed virtual concerts, spoke at the Dear Class of 2020 graduation event, and released the Japanese version of their recent album with an original Japanese single, Stay Gold. Stay Gold! And to top it all off, this was only June. At this point, it was clear that BTS had already dominated their home turf, and they had topped the music charts all over the world. This time, their sight was set for the very top. Remember that scene in The Social Network, where Mark and Sean talk about how they don't want a million dollars, they want a billion dollars. How they're not interested in catching 14 trout, but they'd rather catch an 800 pound marlin? Well, that's what they set their sights on. The marlin. The biggest music industry in the world. The United States. And at the top of that music industry, number one on Billboard Hot 100. This small group from a company that virtually no one- Yo, it's so crazy. Obviously, when I watched through the whole video, he's like building it up, building it up. I think at the start of the video to yeah, bro, what? Heard about eight years ago, planned to take on Goliath himself and dominate the American industry on their home turf. And all they had to do was speak English. August 21st, enter Dynamite. Their first English thing. I think you guys told me there were three English tracks. Uh, three English tracks from BTS. Only three, I think. Simultaneously performed better than anyone had expected, but at the same time is exactly what we as an audience had come to expect from the legendary boy band themselves. And they did it. They reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100, the Global 200, and the Global Excluding US chart. And they made sure that if you hadn't heard of them before, you definitely have now. And if that wasn't already the biggest flex, on October 2nd, they came out with Savage Love BTS Remix with Jason Rulo. I know this track. I know this track. This track went viral, bro. Yo. Somebody, please, somebody break your heart. Getting number one on the Billboard Hot 100 again, less than two months after already getting it number one with Dynamite. And on the Global 200, where they actually replaced themselves at number one, the first artist to do so ever. And this is where we stopped in the original video, October of 2020. So what's happened since then? Well, 2020 till 2021, that's one year. Not much. Oh, On November 20th, their fifth studio album, B, was released, featuring the hit single, Life Goes On. B was met with critical acclaim and hit number one on Billboard 200 and the World Albums Chart, the fifth BTS album to do so, along with topping worldwide charts in countries like Belgium, Canada, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, and of course, their hometown, South, South Korea. Korea. And in spite of all these accolades, perhaps the biggest winner was Life Goes On. A synth-pop showstopper encouraging its audience to continue living life even in the midst of a global pandemic. The message was clear, don't give up, life goes on. It hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, the third BTS song to do so. BTS gave the fans what they wanted with Life Goes On. Life Goes On joined the exclusive club of only eight songs to ever top the Billboard Hot 100 that were not in English, a title most recently held by Despacito. But it was the first to do it in BTS's native tongue, Korean. Leepa, Bad Bunny, and Tiny. Intentions by Justin Bieber and Koivo. Uh, Down the Light by BTS. Oh, this is so cool, the reaction. Wow. Yeah, I'm speechless. By Justin Bieber and Koivo. Uh, Down the Light by BTS. The same month, the Academy announced that BTS's Dynamite would be nominated for the Best Pop Duo Group Performance, along with songs by J Balvin. So do they still live together, all seven of them, in the same house? I don't know, like, I don't know uh, what they do now these days. Like, uh, do their families... I don't think they have families yet, but I know they have to disband if they want to have a family. I think that's in the rules and stuff like that. 
and the contract. Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, and Taylor Swift. This marked the first time a Korean pop artist was nominated for a Grammy. In December, BTS was invited to sing for Disney's holiday sing-along. And on New Year's Eve, Big Hit put on a New Year's concert where they performed again. Things looked really good for BTS and their Grammy nomination. Especially Yo, I want to see more dance videos, bro. Since on March 4th, 2021, the official news came. The International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, or IFPI, announced BTS as the Global Recording Artist of the Year, an award given to the best-selling artist of 2020, period, beating out nine other prominent Western artists, making them the first artist from Korea, but perhaps more importantly, the first non-English artist to do so. Later that month, the Grammys, the main event that everyone was waiting for, finally arrived. With bated breath, BTS and the world watched. And, well. And the Grammy goes to Rain On Me, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, they didn't all oh, jump up and say, blah, 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 blah. They were like, we worked so hard and they laughed and they were. Bro, BTS is so humble, dog. Ariana Grande. <laughs> they didn't win. However, they made history for being the first South Korean artist to perform at the Grammys, after presenting at the Grammys the year prior. March 31st, 2021, Big Hit Entertainment officially rebrands as HYBE and completely revamps their organization. BTS now falls under Big Hit Music, which is now a subsidiary of HYBE Labels, a division of the HYBE Corporation. Two days later, HYBE acquires Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings. Scooter Braun Projects is a subsidiary of Ithaca Holdings that manages several artists, including Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber. Wait, wait, let me understand this, this whole tree now. This tree is... You get Hype, then you get Hype Labels, Hype Solutions, Hype Platforms. Two days later, Hype acquires Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings. Scooter Braun Projects is a subsidiary of Ithaca oh. Holdings that manages several artists, okay. including Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, Jay Balvin, Carly Rae Jepsen, Black Eyed Peas, Demi Lovato, and others, which means that those artists are now part of the same family as BTS. Then, at long last, BTS announced their highly anticipated follow-up single to their smash English hit, Dynamite. And that single was Butter. May 21st? Bro, butter. If I go through every single video of mine ranked to BTS, butter will be the comments, bro. This is the highest requested track, no cap. 2021. It didn't disappoint. The retro summer pop hit met immediate success, and you on May 26th, the BTS meal launched. Yeah, the BTS meal and McDonald's. Yeah, that happened. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. June 16th, so BTS cool. releases their third Japanese compilation album known as BTS the best. It instantly hit number one on Japan's Oricon chart and sold over one million albums, the first and only Korean boy group so far to accomplish this feat. The new Japanese single, Film Out, I feel this whole video I've heard the first to ever so many times, was released two months earlier and debuted at number one on the Oricon chart. And as an interesting fact, charted at 185 on the Billboard 200, excluding US chart. Joining Dynamite and Life Goes On, making BTS the only artist to ever have three songs in three different languages on the Billboard 200. On July- Three- three different languages, I missed that. English, their own language, and then I think Japanese. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Only artist to ever have three songs in three different languages on the Billboard 200. Yeah. On July 1st, following an organizational restructuring, the Hype Corporation announced that Hitman Bang, our same Hitman Bang who got the boys together, resigned as CEO of the company in order to focus on his passion for music production. And while he is still the chairman of the board of directors, he was replaced as CEO by Pak Ji Won. On July 7th, BTS became official models for Louis Vuitton as they walked the runway for part of their men's fall winter 2021 collection. They bro, I don't think you can like get all of their achievements, bro. There's so many. Like, I don't know. These guys, I don't think anyone would ever be able to beat them, bro. Ever. I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is a very big accomplishment. I didn't think it was this big. I knew they were big, but like, knowing all the facts, for Louis Vuitton as they walked the runway for part of their men's fall winter 2021 collection. They were named as ambassadors only two months prior, and then for their teaser trailer, they forgot to put V in the video. <laughs> and finally, that brings us to That's July. 9th. 
Permission to Dance, which was released only a few days ago. The hit song, which was written by Ed Sheeran, spreads positive vibes as the world starts to recover from the global pandemic. Its YouTube debut saw 72.3 million views in the first 24 hours, placing itself at number 6 of the top 10 most viewed music videos in the first 24 hours. Out of BTS's past 5 singles, 3 of them have been fully in English. And while this trend has been concerning for some fans who have been wanting more traditional Korean pop songs, there's no denying that BTS has enjoyed global recognition like no other international and particularly non-English group before them, and that itself is a sign of success that can't be ignored. And as a fun fact, there's a line in the song referencing legendary singer-songwriter Elton John. When it all seems like it's wrong, sing along to Elton John and to that feel. He gave the song his personal approval. Yo, when it seems like it's right, I sing along with Yo. Along to Elton John and to that feel. He gave the song his personal approval. What? So what makes BTS so special? How did they achieve all this? K-pop is a genre that spans for at least 30 years, and there have been hundreds of boy groups and hundreds of girl groups. What did BTS do to rise above all of them they didn't and break quit. to markets they never didn't quit. seen? Historically, the boy band industry has been dominated by white English-speaking bands. And the fact that BTS has not only held their own, but blew any sign of competition out of the water on a global scale can be attributed to nothing less than their talent, hard work, and a bit of a one in a million miracle. They did it through their own blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak. Around the- Yeah, that they deserve everything coming their way. No well, doubt about it. Boy bands have pretty much fallen into obscurity, but BTS is thriving. And though I've stated this all before, it's worth saying again, in contrast to other bands who would sing about romantic relationships with girls and what some would call predictable bubblegum pop tunes, <laughs> BTS is continuously pushing the envelope and changing their styles. According to an article by Vulture.com, they describe this style as much less a successor of the Backstreet Boys and more of the successors of Michael Jackson, whose choreography and charisma were unprecedented. While of course there's a lot of love for the angelic vocals of BTS, rap has also played a very important part in creating their own style. In stark contrast to the typical boy band where every member sings, it's so refreshing when you're in the middle of a song and you hear RM's raw rapping skills. J I can't wait for to hear RM's rapping skills. I can't wait, guys. Yo, I'm only getting started. Soul put into every single line. Interestingly enough, at the first glance, it seems that the success of BTS was miraculous, despite not being part of the Big Three. But it can also be argued that their success was because of their separation from the Big Three. Their label, Big Hit Entertainment, whose founder emphasizes artistic freedom more than anything else, allowed them them to make their own sound. And going back to BTS Universe, it's not often that a K-pop group does something special with each of their songs and albums, utilizing strong storytelling that can go beyond simply the song itself, but rather interconnected with other songs and even other albums to create one large overarching story. And not only do they all have their own expertise in performance, but also each of them have had the experience of writing and producing their own music, and they're not afraid to let their style evolve over time. BTS during their debut is such a far cry from Wings era BTS and current day BTS. They also chose to tackle more adult issues instead of simply love and girls while they definitely didn't have a shortage of those they also cover other very important issues such Yo, as mental health it's the the versatility is crazy and where he said about uh music videos combining music videos creating a whole story i'll try and figure it out but a lot of you said it's literally so hard and there's like people who did the whole connection for you so i'll probably react to those videos and then when i've read all of them i'll do the whole storyline bro that would be so cool regret following your dreams hard work self-love and many 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 others add that to the fact that as fans we can feel the authenticity of the members themselves they seem approachable bts seems like there's a place for every type of fan and in this fast-paced world where things change at unthinkable speeds, BTS has stayed grounded and faithful to who they were and who they are. Those kids we saw on American Hustle Life along with their dreams and passions are the same men who stand before us today. And while some artists like to keep their personal lives private, BTS gives us a look at their personal lives through their vlogs, which allows us to become more connected to them than ever before. Wow. What is truly amazing is that they're doing this all while singing in their native tongue. Korean. Their music holds so much power that it literally breaks through the barriers of language. And no, they're not done yet. They've shown that they're capable of dominating music charts across the world and even reaching across the Pacific Ocean and conquering the music industry in the United States. What's next for them? 
Lars? In any case, <laughs> they've yeah. only started in 2013 and BTS is as strong as it's ever been. And that's our 2021 update. There's been lots of exciting news for the group so far, and I'm gonna guess that 2021 you, will still have you. a lot of surprises waiting for us. Thank you to everyone who watched the original video. Thank you, We've changed bro. some of the information thank to make you, it more accurate bro. or easier to understand. We're always looking to improve our videos, so if you find something that needs improving, leave a comment below. A big shout out to our almost 160,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. And remember to break your plans, live like you're golden, and roll in like you're dancing fools. Thanks for watching, everyone. That's been the most beautiful life goes on. A story of BTS 2021 update. Big shout out to Asian Theory. Link to his channel will be in the description below. This video was amazing. This is the longest video I've ever reacted to on my channel. This is history. I also made history today. You know, this is this is really going to help me out in my BTS rabbit hole, as you guys say in the comment section below with reacting to their tracks. Bro, it, every time it blows my mind, knowing more and more and the stuff that goes on in this BTS community, bro. Crazy, crazy. But anyways, I'm so hyped to check out the music videos very soon. I promise you it will come very soon. But anyways, let me know in the comment section below. In the meanwhile, what I should react to. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget, if this is your first time you're on my channel and you haven't subscribed yet and you enjoy my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's all for free. That's been your boy. Thank you for tuning in. You mean the most. I'm out. So.